Hello, welcome to Adventures with Sarah's Ask Me Anything. I have put out a question on Facebook, what would you like to know about as far as travel goes? And I can't answer all of them, there were over 100 questions. I'll handle just a handful of them. The others I'll try to respond to either on Facebook or on a blog at a later time. So let's get started. Uh, first question is about London. Uh, recommendations for pre-theater dinner in London. I love going to see shows in London. It's very inexpensive sometimes. I'll usually get even just cheap last minute tickets for 10 to 15 pounds. And I like to hit uh, the Masala Zone, which is in Covent Garden for dinner ahead of time. They have a deal where you can get a tali, which is a platter of all kinds of different Indian specialties. Uh, and it's not very expensive. So that's my top choice. If you don't like Indian food, you can head to Trafalgar Square and there's a pub there called The Anchor that I rather like that does a pie sampler where they have maybe three or four little tiny pies and beers to match each of the pies. Uh, so those are fun little ways you can have a nice pre-theater dinner. All throughout the theater district, there are places though that offer pre-theater specials and they can be quite inexpensive. So that's a good uh, thing to look for if you have a restaurant in mind. Uh, other things, what would you do in London with two days? With two days in London, I would take as many of the London walks, walks as you can. Their website is walks.com and they offer multiple itineraries every day from general themes down to specialized uh, tours. I really like their Hampstead Heath walk. I think that's a really lovely uh, walk to go on, uh, but lots of choices as far as they're concerned. And they offer a discount card if you do multiple tours uh, while during your stay. So I highly recommend them. Otherwise hit some of the great museums uh, like the v &A or the British uh, go and have tea. I really love to go have high tea. It's a bit splashy, but uh, I like the Wolseley, which is uh, near in Piccadilly that's near the Ritz. Uh, very inexpensive compared to the other competitors, and it's a lovely tea to go and, and try. So those are a couple of thoughts about London. Uh, let's see. Uh, a few days in Rome before the start of a Rick Steves Italy tour. What to do? I highly recommend doing the underground sites, the things that you can't really do with the tour group. You can do the Scavi underneath St. Peter's if you ask for recommend reservations ahead of time. You can make reservations on the weekend to see the Domus Aurea. Uh, you can also go and see Palazzo Valentini any day of the week, except for one, I believe, I think it's Tuesdays. Uh, and that's a wonderful way to see what's underneath the layers of Rome. So those are my favorite ways. Uh, and I did write an article about that on my blog about going underground in Rome. So I highly recommend uh, checking out that article for more uh, suggestions. Best hotel in Osteria in the Cinque Terre. Uh, in the Cinque Terre, my favorite hotels are Hotel Primavera and Levanto, not technically the, the uh, Cinque Terre, but they're great friends of mine at Hotel Primavera. Uh, also in, uh, Monteroso, uh, my friends, the Passini family, they run the Pasquale and Villa Steno. They're wonderful people. I've known them for many years and they're wonderful. Also in Monteroso, um, I think it's called Albergo Maestrale. I stayed there the last time I did the book research for that, for that book and really was impressed by them as well. So those are my favorite hotels in the Cinque Terre. Uh, best place to eat there? I have a soft spot in my heart for the Castello in Vernazza, which is owned by a longtime friend named Monica. So that has a stunning view and good food. Uh, so that's really a great uh, option if you're in the town of Vernazza. Uh, let's see. Next question. Favorite aspect of Florence? Oh boy, uh, that's hard. I would say uh, the food is my favorite aspect. I'm a big steak lover, I'm a carnivore, and I love eating the Bistecca alla Fiorentina, which is the steak that's sold by weight. Uh, I also really enjoy going and seeing a lot of the obscure museums there. The big ones are always packed, but there are so many great museums in Florence, like uh, the Museum of Semi-Crushed Stones, the Bargello, which is actually famous, but not many people actually go there. Uh, and there's the Bardini Gardens. There's lots of offbeat museums that are wonderful. So that's probably my favorite aspect is just sort of delving in a little bit deeper uh, and checking out other parts of Florence. Uh, gifts to take to people in in Europe or in your travels. Uh, several questions about that. What should you take from your hometown as a gift to people who are going to host you? I really like to bring something that is special from my hometown, but something that they'll be sure to enjoy. I'm from Seattle and we have a chocolate shop here called Franz Chocolates and I love their salted caramels, which is something unique. It's something that they make here and, and is well known. So I usually take just little boxes of the salted caramels as a hostess gift uh, for my friends abroad. Uh, if you are from Oh, I don't know, someplace that sells peanuts, buy peanuts. If you're from Hawaii, bring macadamia nuts. I mean, there's some obvious ones. Um, you can also just bring something that is sentimental to you. Uh, you can take pictures of places around your house and have them printed up as little postcards, something like that. So there's lots of different choices uh, for things that you can bring, but it should speak to the place that you're from. Okay, 
12 hours in Genova. What should you do with your time in Genova? Uh, Genova is a really nice city just to wander around, not very touristic. They have a well-known aquarium, they have a pirate ship, and they also have just a charming central core. So what I would do in Genova is just to go for a really nice meal, wander the town, and wander the waterfront. Those are the most uh, interesting places. Morocco, what is the best shopping in Morocco? Everywhere, Morocco is crazy, it's so wonderful to shop. By far, the best options for shopping are uh, in Fez and in uh, Marrakesh. Fez is a little bit more local, it's not as touristic, it's more traditional. Uh, I saw many, many stands selling camel burgers and things like that, really kind of old fashioned, true Moroccan, not as uh, touristy, but you can also buy good leather goods in Morocco. I bought beautiful leather camel shoes that I love. Uh, but also there you can buy belts, you can buy scarves, different things like that, pottery. Uh, in Marrakesh, you'll find everything, but I found Marrakesh, of course, was a little bit more expensive, and also it's going to be a little more design-oriented. And as an architect, I really appreciated that, that it, there were a lot of kind of higher-end designy shops. There's a lot of expatriates there that are running very cool stores. Just remember in Morocco, nothing has a price on it, and you have to start the bargaining and always start, I learned this, at 20% of what they tell you. So if they tell you it's 100 bucks, you offer them 20, no matter how crazy that sounds, that's the opening price. They always like to say, I'd like to, uh, what do they, touch money with you, that's what their phrase is, let's touch money. So as you progress in your, uh, your negotiations, think to target to pay for about half of what they first offer. I, I think more than that would be crazy. So uh, Morocco is incredible. Be sure you bring an extra suitcase because you will, absolutely need it. Where can you get religious jewelry in Rome? In the Vatican itself, as you're looking at St. Peter's, if you go up in towards the line that takes you to the dome climb, there's a little shop there that nuns run. Also, if you go up to the dome before you get to the very top, there's a terrace with a cafe and another shop up there that sells things, uh, devotional objects. Also in the Vatican Museum, there are a thousand of these little shops. Uh, so these are some good choices for you. I think they say that the things are blessed by the Pope, but I have a hard time believing the Pope is in front of the shipping container from China going, I bless the 10 million rosaries. So I'm not really sure, but at least buying it from the Vatican, I think has some meaning, at least for my Catholic relatives. So that's what I would uh, recommend. All right, <clears throat> moving on, uh, let's see. Oh, da, da, da. Best places to stay in Venice. I've had a few people ask me that. That was asked multiple times. Uh, if you're going to Venice, I like to suggest the region called Canareggio, which is the Jewish ghetto area. And uh, there are lots of cute little B&Bs and smaller kinds of apartments and things you can rent in that area. I would highly recommend a B&B &B or a hotel. Airbnb is a really big problem for Venice because it's really uh, eroding the economy there. So I would stick to staying in a, a family-run B&B or hotel. Uh, Dorso Duro is higher rent district, but it is a very nice district and also a little bit more calm. So those are areas that'll keep you away from the tourist fray. If you really wanna get outside of the tourist fray, you can go more towards Arsenale, uh, which is towards the Biennale Gardens, or Cas uh, not in Castello, I think that's a little bit too close to St. Mark's, uh, sort of in that area, but go more towards the tail of the fish. Uh, alternately, you could think about staying on the Lido or perhaps on one of the islands like Murano. Uh, that will give you a little bit of a breather from uh, the tourist mobs. But really, don't stay anywhere near the train station or near San Marco, because it's just a little too much. Uh, get it off the, to the fringes. Go to the fringes if you can. All right, uh, where can I find the tours that you plan to lead in 2019 and 2020? Uh, you can go to my tours page on adventureswithsarah.net. I haven't quite announced my tours for the fall of 2020. I'm finalizing them, but I have two really magnificent adventures for you in October of 2020. Uh, my newsletter will have information about that, and I'm hoping to get a newsletter out to those who have subscribed to it. Uh, you'll have first opportunity to book those tours, and that should be done uh, in about a week or two. So if you're not on my newsletter, go to my website, adventureswithsarah.net, and sign up for, I'm calling it my very important traveler club. So you'll see a little screen pop up, sign up there, and you'll get first information about 2020's uh, tours. All right, uh, Athens, a lot of questions about Athens. Is it safe? Yes, it is. It's just as safe as your hometown. It's wonderful and clean. I had a wonderful time there when I did a little trip uh, just spontaneously. I really recommend the Acropolis Museum, of course, that's one of the most fantastic museums in Europe, but also their regular archeological museum and the Byzantine Art Museum. Do a little food tour if you can. There are some food tours that are offered in Athens. That's well worth your time. The food is an awful lot of fun. They focus a lot on street food. So yes, Athens is well worth your time and would be a nice home base for doing other sort of uh, 
travel out into greater Greece, just stay in Athens and then do day trips, you could certainly uh, do that. 10 restful days in Sicily. Oh boy, I wrote a book about that. Get the Rick Steves uh, Sicily guidebook. Uh, me and my colleague Alfio Di Mauro spent seven years working on that project and it's a beauty. <clears throat> so <clears throat> if you have 10 days in Sicily, you definitely have to do Palermo, do Syracuse, do Agrigento. Uh, you'll have enough time to get to the west out to Tropani. And of course you wanna see Mount Etna uh, and Taromina. I'll be doing some coverage of the Aeolian Islands later this year. I'm taking my sons there in, uh, in July. So I'll have more information for you on that stuff as time progresses about the, the islands and some more backdoor places in Sicily. So excellent book, well, I think. I put a lot of effort into it along with my with my colleagues. So check that one out. Uh, let's see, what does a typical day traveling with your kids look like? Well, I don't know. I'm going to have to ask my kids that one, but typically we like to, uh, my kids are the cameramen, by the way. So Luca, what do you say? What's a typical day traveling with me? Hopefully lots of chocolate. Lots of chocolate, yes. The chocolate is important. We usually choose two or three sites a day, something manageable. Only half day of sightseeing, the other half of the day, of the day should be uh, to rest, you know, just kind of chill out and, and do not much of anything. So you have to balance busy time and lazy time. <clears throat> and kids definitely need more lazy time than you probably think. So lower your pace and your expectations and everybody will have a good time. Uh, when you're in Thailand, what's the best way to see Angkor Wat? Angkor Wat is in Cambodia, which is a very short flight from uh, Thailand. So you can fly out of Bangkok, you can land in Siam Reap, and then in Siam Reap from there you can go and see Angkor Wat. You can't do it as a day trip, they won't allow you to do that there. So you have to do at least one or two nights, and it's well worth spending, I would say, even three nights uh, as a little extension to any trip to Thailand going up into Cambodia. I do three nights on my Thailand tour, and it's not even enough. Cambodia will charm you. You will just fall in love with it. I have a soft spot in my heart for Cambodia. So um, do more than just a day or two there. Try to extend it and get to know the Cambodian people. They're fantastic. Uh, how did I get started in the travel industry? Oh, that's a long, a long story, but basically I traveled uh, a lot when I was a teenager and I studied in Rome as a student and learned to speak Italian and uh, I was an architect and I decided to give up being an architect and uh, sent a resume to Rick Steves. Uh, I had some credentials speaking Italian. I have a degree in architecture and a degree in history and it's definitely my zone, Italy is, so uh, I was very fortunate to be hired by them. It's really changed the course of my life. So my advice, if you're interested in getting in the travel industry, is start somewhere, learn a language for sure, and become an expert at whatever destination it is that fascinates you the most, because generalists, there's too many of them, but people who are really intent on a certain destination, try to find a niche nobody else has thought of, whether that's a destination or whether that's a place that uh, you, uh, are interested in. Okay, last one. I know that we could keep going, but let's go ahead and just stop with one more. Um, let's see. Oh boy, too many, you guys. Um, do I buy travel insurance? That's a great question. No, I don't. Sorry, that's not. Do, this is a, a, one of those moments. Um, do as I say and not as I do. You should get travel insurance, especially if you are, let's say, over maybe 40 years old. Uh, because you never know what's going to happen, particularly if you have any things in your life that may make it difficult uh, in the future. Let's say you have ailing parents or you have uh, a situation at home that could make it, cause you to cancel your trip. If you have any physical problems, for sure get travel insurance in those cases. Things happen and you never know why they are going to. So everybody can benefit from travel insurance. I just never have. I also have a lot of connections though, so if something were to happen to me, I would be able to solve those problems because I'm a lot more well-versed in travel. So yeah, I do recommend it. I don't do it. I should do it. Maybe I will do it in the future. So that's something I'll try to write a little bit more about is some thoughts about travel insurance because that's rather a big subject. So I hope that that's really helpful to you. I will go ahead and work on the rest of these questions and try to get a blog up for you with some more answers. Uh, thanks for playing Ask Me Anything and I will be back again in another week or two with another opportunity to answer questions. Ciao for now.